Go for it. Um, when and where did you and Barry Beierstein meet? A very long time ago. Um, Barry had invited me to come out to Simon Fraser to give a talk. Uh, this is probably around 1975, 76. I'm not sure of the exact year. And uh, we had corresponded before that. <coughs> but we hit it off right off the bat, and we became good friends. And uh, one of the things that always sticks in my mind with Barry is his willingness to be helpful in every possible way. And so when he would come to Toronto and visit, uh, it, I remember it started out one day, we were sitting outside on my deck, and I happened to look up at the eaves troughs because uh, I hadn't cleaned them yet. And uh, I recently moved into that house, the, it's about two stories up, I thought, I'm going to have to get a big ladder someday. I was just looking at it. Barry said, what are, you, what are you looking at? I said, oh, nothing. No, you're looking at something. What is it? Well, the eaves troughs. I've got to clean them. Well, why don't we do that now? I said, well, I don't have a ladder. Well, why don't we go get a ladder? <laughs> so we actually went out to a hardware store, got one of these extension ladders. Of course, it wouldn't fit into a car, so we had to carry it through traffic home. And I held the ladder while Barry got up and, and cleaned the eaves. Well, then a little later, uh, we, as I said, we recently moved to this house. He saw me looking at something else. What did he get? I said, well, there's a doorbell there, an outside doorbell. When people ring the doorbell, it's supposed to ring out here, but it, it doesn't work. Oh, well, so he spent about three hours following the wiring through and fixing that. And so every time he came after that, I sort of make lists in my mind. <laughs> and, and just look at something. And, very, and he would go and do it. Very helpful man. Very high level handyman. Right. Well, well, every time I visited their house, every time I, I came to visit, which is, he had me several times up there, they were always doing something to their house, rebuilding the room, adding, doing stuff, changing everything around. They built, by the way, the house they, they lived in, uh, they had built it from scratch. They were, they were the first ones there on this nice bluff overlooking the uh, bay, and the other people had gradually added very high level homes around it, but they were the first ones there. They built everything themselves. They did everything, both he and Susie. I, I just was amazed they did the, the, the wiring themselves. They did everything. And every time I visited, they were building something else, rebuilding something else, making, changing the room, this and that. They were fab fabulous people there. And I, I also wish I could get them to Eugene, because if I'm going to hire a contractor, they would be. Uh, they were fantastic. Uh, and and uh, on top of that, Barry was this, uh, uh, what would you call him? Jack of all trades, a what you call a polymath, but he knew everything. There wasn't a subject which I could, and I'd call Barry up and say, do you know about this? He knew, not only knew about it, he would send me a, a, a whole paper on, on that particular person or issue. And he had every, he knew about everything, he had every, he had written on everything. There wasn't anything he didn't Since cover. Sports. What's that? Didn't know anything about sports. <laughs> sports, that's, that's true. I saw good, there was something he didn't know about that. Thank you for telling me. I didn't, I didn't realize that, but he knew everything else. <laughs> do you have, Lindsay, do you have a recollection of the sort of can-do projects? And oh, yeah. I mean, when, whenever, I, whenever anybody would move in somewhere new, he would build bookcases for them. So, like, when my cousins got their dorm rooms or, you know, various friends of the family got their own first apartments, my dad would come in there and just build some bookcases for them. Because, obviously, they would need bookcases for their books if they are going to have a new home. Did he have a tool a, a workshop or something? Yeah, yeah. Home Workshop downstairs. He would um, various saws. I remember one time he um, he cut his fig tip of his finger off while he was working on one of the saws. And luckily, my mom's dad was a, a surgeon, and he and my dad had tagged along to this vascular surgery clinic for continuing medical education to see how they reattach fingers under microscopes. And so, luckily, my dad like scooped up his finger. To and they went to the emergency room. Like the guy who was actually in charge of attaching it wasn't necessarily so good at it, so he was giving them some pointers. And you know, he had the scar for the rest of his life, but it turned out perfect. It, it sewed it back on. Yep, sewed it back on, worked, nailed her back, and everything. 